Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships with the Hive Hand and today we're going to do our first look at HMS Plymouth the brand new premium tier 7 British cruiser and I'm just going to say it, it's it's the British cruiser that that we needed um Belfast 43 was was a bit of a letdown um post buff it's actually a pretty decent ship um a, if sort of very like middle of the road it's not great it's not terrible um i, I had to have a look there because yes that is in fact ladies and gentlemen a job but moving forward at the beginning of a match um you won't see this anywhere else so 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 that's a that's a nice addition to the video um right um i have played I, i've played about six matches in the plymouth so far um there is a stream available on my channel um if you want to watch a sort of breakdown and go into uh go into all the details this is going to be a bit of a, a quick and nasty video because i've got stuff to do this evening but i did want to get a video out there that was uh, sort of shorter and had the detail uh a bit more compressed uh for anyone who was uh who was thinking about parting with their money to buy the ship because we essentially like i i, I want people to make smart choices there's nothing worse than spending 40 50 bucks on a ship only to be uh, massively disappointed in it um so the only way i can really describe the ship is this is this is a fiji on on steroids like it's the only way to describe it. it's not like the edinburgh uh we have a 16 mil bow and stern and we have a um uh an armor belt of 114 millimeters which isn't particularly strong uh, we also have um uh, 19 millimeters of armor everywhere else uh, although the citadel uh, the citadel is huge uh, it's for all intensive purposes the entire length of the ship from the from turret one to turret four uh, but it does sit quite low it's barely visible above the waterline um so yeah it, it's citadel is is kind of hard to hit um but but the armor is quite weak this will take a lot of damage it's a hundred percent should be played as a uh, as a support ship like you don't want to go push in anything by yourself because chances are it's it's not going to go how uh, how you planned or how you expected it to um it is it is quite fragile um but it does boast forty one thousand hit points um, with my build, which I use Bruce Frazier, uh, with Von Essen and Yamamoto as inspirations. Um, I can't remember all the perks, but I know it was Pierce uh, punch through, um, essentially going for improving the, the penetration of the guns, uh, as much as possible, which you should see work, uh, pretty effectively, um, throughout the, uh, the gameplay, uh, in the background here. Um, so, uh, it's, it's DPM. Is, is a little over 500,000. Uh, that's right, five five 500,000. Obviously, you can only fire armor piercing. Uh, not obviously, because I suppose the Belfasts fire HE. Uh, but yes, it only fires armor piercing. Um, so obviously, that uh, that can be, uh, be, a, be a factor uh, in decisions. Uh, you can only run smoke or radar. Um, personally, because of how fragile the ship is, I would suggest smoke, uh, although the radar is 9.9 .9 kilometers and does run for 40 seconds. You can see we absolutely melt uh, this Bismarck. Six and a half second reload, 1,652 millimeter guns. Um, and the guns are accurate, which is another big advantage of uh, of the ship. The, the guns the guns work, they, they, they hit what you're pointed at. Um, the shell arcs are quite good, um, so you can take advantage uh, of uh, of island cover, uh, particularly at sort of 14, 15 um, kilometre ranges, obviously shorter ranges, as you can see here, the shell arc is kind of low. The shell velocity is quite quick, uh, which does make it difficult uh, to, uh, uh, can make it difficult to fire over islands if your target's close to you. But if you're, if you're sort of holding back, like you can see, like I am, I'm, I'm playing my support role. I'm uh, allowing my other ships to uh, to essentially get shot at uh, whilst I sit in a position where I can fire from safety because, yeah, you, you don't want to get spotted in it because it will take a lot of damage from a lot of ships. As you can see, we just, 
like it wasn't it wasn't the best salve on the world but we just chunked that battle fast for uh for quite a lot of damage uh really really quickly uh so we're going to continue here to uh to sit back and uh and and support look at that look at that john bart that john bart ladies and gentlemen has actually capped a point I said, I said, I said at the beginning, you, you weren't going to see, you, you weren't going to see this anywhere else. And like credit where credit's due, a lot of people play the Jean Bart wrong um, by by holding back. But uh, it's it's nice when uh, when you see one uh, pushing forward. So we're going to continue. Obviously, like bow tanking ships are obviously not the optimum target for the Plymouth, but sometimes like you 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 just have to. Sometimes it's the only available target. You just have to deal with it. Unfortunately. Uh, so there we go. Belfast 43 appears uh, quite broadside to us. Uh, we only score two Citadels. It's in all fairness. I was a little bit disappointed with. Uh, but that second salvo is going to finish them off and uh, and see them through. Uh, unfortunately, we did actually lose the Jean Bart. In all fairness, he was stuck between a Belfast, a Weenmar. And he had the and he was taking the full force of the Bismarck's anger uh before we sent him to uh to DV Jones's locker. So uh so credit with credit to you. Thank you, John Bart. If he hadn't pushed up, there's no way we would have well, we could have won the flank. I'm not saying there's no way we could have won the flank. Um, but he was definitely uh, like a big contributing factor. So uh GG's Mr. Jean Bart player, uh if you're out there. Uh, so obviously we've got no targets over here now we lost one ship uh, but we did take out all three of theirs uh, so we've got a vanguard here pretty much at, uh, at maximum range um, so uh, we're gonna as you can see like accuracy like the accuracy on these guns is really good you don't need to buff the accuracy on them uh, this is why I focus purely on pen but as you can see like we're like 15 kilometers away from this vanguard you can see you know just how uh, how high the shell arc is which like allows you it's good in a way because it does allow you to fire over islands quite a lot which is perfect for the Plymouth um, but obviously it can be uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's a bit of a disadvantage in the old uh, the old accuracy uh, world um, and and it's just consistent damage. They're so accurate. We just keep on hitting and hitting the vanguard, and uh, it's going to be uh, death by a thousand cuts as we uh, as we slowly keep on picking him down. Uh, this is really the first time we probably got shot at by something big. Uh, unfortunately, the vanguard didn't really. Um, didn't really deliver we were hoping to see the uh, we we're hoping to test out the armor a little bit um i have taken hits from uh from other ships and like oh, you do not want to you don't want to be the focus of anyone's fire uh in in the plymouth that's the balancing factor it's dpm's amazing it's guns are amazing uh it can fire um four torpedoes of either side so it's got eight that can be fired sequentially so one at a time uh, or you can fire a full salvo of four so that's something to take into account it has basically has one more torpedo each side uh than than the edinburgh uh also at tier seven so uh, so yeah that's something to uh consider uh this game looks like it's going our way but all of a sudden uh, you're gonna see, you know, what's what was what what looked to be a semi convincing win going on suddenly becomes a three versus four, and that is also gonna change quite quickly uh, again. And this is gonna end up being a two v two v four. It's gonna be myself and uh, and the carrier uh, left alive, and uh, uh, the Plymouth is uh, uh, in all fairness to the enemy Plymouth. <laughs> He had a really good game. You'll see at the end of the match. Uh, obviously, this is our first interaction with him, uh, which is nine minutes into the into the battle. Um, so we uh, we didn't uh, we didn't get to really do get out with him or slow him down. But he has a has what I would consider a, a pretty damn impressive match in a, in a brand new boat uh, in what has to be one of his first games because the ship's only been out for. Uh, for a couple of hours at this point uh unfortunately we're in a bit of a pickle here we have got the enemy carrier uh keeping us spotted and lit up both the plymouth and the suzuya are uh, are now in the uh the smoke screen and we're just gonna sort of try and do our best to sort of dodge them stay alive obviously the carrier planes have now buggered off uh so we are free but unfortunately um 
in that time we did lose the Otago. So this is where it becomes a, a two versus four situation. They've got a Brandenburg, they've got the Atal, uh, they've got the Suzuya, they've also got a uh, Plymouth, and of course their carrier is still in the match here. And uh, there we go. Suzuya gets spotted by our carrier. Uh, in all fairness, the carrier did uh, did quite well. He supported us pretty good uh, at the end. You um, we get a we get a cheeky little citadel hit from him. Obviously, we're taking fire from the Plymouth. Uh, I believe these. In all fairness, these could be either. These could be the Plymouth or the Suzuki's torps. Um, but uh, yeah, we managed to we managed to dodge them. We do take a. Uh, uh, we do take a hit from the uh, from the carrier, but basically my my thought process here is like these two are just going to pepper the hell out of me if I'm spotted. Um, so I'm going to sit in my smoke until the uh, until the carrier's gone, uh, carrier's gone and uh, gone and disappeared, and uh, that should allow us um, sufficient sort of time to uh, to to eke out the win here because we are ahead on points, but it is. Uh, it is fairly close and our carrier does actually uh, finish off the Suzuya. The Suzuya is now dead. It's not a problem. We just have this enemy Minotaur to deal with. Ignore my terrible aiming. We were just trying our luck, uh, trying to uh, trying to get some hits in whilst we could. But uh, obviously uh, he sort of perched himself up, angled himself. Well, I'm not going to go and push again now because there is uh, a plane there i am going to be spotted and he's going to it's going to give him the advantage at the moment he knows roughly where i am he doesn't know exactly where i am and uh, and we're going to try and use that to advantage we check with our torpedoes uh, to see that he is actually pushing out so we're going to carry on reversing uh, this way he's spotted by our carrier he's going to have to move to dodge those torps and uh, that is going to give us the uh, the opportunity uh, we need to uh, fire safely from our smoke, 5.7 kilometer uh, smoke firing penalty. So we're just outside of that. He does try and blind fire us. Uh, we pick up our high caliber medal. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. He's done, he's dead. Uh, so we've now increased our lead to uh, a little over 200 uh, points. I'm a little bit torn here with exactly how to win this match. Do I go hunting for the carrier? Do I go looking for the Brandenburg. Um, my thoughts, personally, I don't particularly want to go for the Brandenburg. Um, he was last seen uh, right on the outskirts of sea, but their carrier is spotted, so uh, why not? Let's uh, let's push up and see if we can, uh, see if we can, with the assistance of our carrier, uh, spotting him, see if we can, see if we can further extend our lead and uh and take out the uh the shikaku the, the sort of thought process is uh, if the brandenburg's there it doesn't really matter if i die because if i die uh like we'll we'll gain more points by their shikaku dying than me dying so it'll put us at an advantage um we've only got two minutes left in the match so it really doesn't matter uh what happens to me uh unfortunately our carrier decides uh, to uh, to instead of sticking around and spotting, um, he's he's obviously trying to he's trying to go he's trying to get the damage, uh, which means uh, the Chicago is unspotted. But obviously, as his planes come back in, Chicago once again is spotted, and uh, we're going to do our best to uh, to try and finish him off uh, before the match ends and just just farm a little bit more damage. Um, so. Yeah, he attempts to bomb us. Uh, we dodge them. Um, we are at the AA is kind of mediocre. It's not terrible. It's not great. So that is one thing to consider. <laughs> Excuse me. Jeez. And uh, there we go. Our carrier finishes him off. We end the match then because this is the end of the match. There is going to be nothing uh, exciting going on apart from uh, apart from that carrier trying to trying to desperately throw his last couple of torpedoes at me. Um, we're going to finish that battle on a hundred and fifty-four thousand nine hundred and seventy um, uh, points worth of damage, uh, three kills, uh, a couple of incapacitations, thirteen planes shot down, and what is that? Three hundred and three hits, uh, along with our confederate medal and our high caliber medal as well. And that is when the Brandenburg gets spotted exactly where he was. 
uh, last time. I don't know if he's disconnected or if he just left the match. Um, but yeah, it's literally just waiting for the uh, the timer to count down as we enter the last 15 seconds of the battle. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the Plymouth. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, jacked up Fiji. A Fiji on steroids. So it, it has the 16 mil of armor. I checked to see how many torpedoes I can fire off the side there. So it has the 16 millimeter of armor, millimeters of armor. Uh, fantastic guns. It's a support ship that should be played behind your front line. And, uh, and if you enjoy that playstyle, it's amazing. If you prefer like your, your Edinburgh's or, you know, your Hippers or your sort of long range sort of spammers, this, this really isn't going to be the ship for you. But if you like playing that support role and you can get yourself into those positions, uh, I averaged out of four wins, uh, 29,000 base XP. Uh, I did take two uh, losses, which were unfortunate, but my average base XP out of the six games I've played uh, is is twenty five hundred uh thousand uh twenty five hundred base XP so uh pretty good with a sixty six percent win rate uh excellent ship um anyway do hope you enjoyed and until next time take care. <laughs>